Okay, it is September 11th, 2017, 9-11, uh, as I'm sure some of you are very painfully aware. Uh, today's video is a little different. <clears throat> Today has been a little different. Uh, seem to be doing a lot of catching up and just didn't have a whole lot to film up until now. Um, it's now after lunchtime. Uh, but what I did, I did put together my new sand I bought over the weekend so I can hold these fingers better. And like I mentioned before, my wiring thing, the wire thing just did not work well for me. I even did not show you up real well here. I didn't get the bottom of the fender coated with the epoxy. It was just, it was a mess. Um, and here and here were big giant fingerprints where I tried to move the fingers too fast. The end of my day Friday just wasn't what I wanted to be. More fingerprint there. Uh, so, we're not setting up to run and I just touched up spots where it went to the bare metal after sanding the run out with a brush actually of the epoxy. I'm going to sand that down here in a minute and get ready to go with the polyester. So, uh, for all you hacks out there like me, I'll let you know how this turns out after a quick knockdown of that and we'll see how it looks with the polyester. So, I feel like I'm finally getting to do something today. So, stay tuned. Okay, time to mix up our polyester primer. And as you can see, it's very important to stir this. I shook this as long as I can stand it by hand. And then now I'm trying to get out. There's plenty of <coughs> sediment or separation of this stuff down the bottom. So I'll be stirring this for a while. Hopefully it'll won't take too long and get worked back into the product. And we'll be ready to add our activator squirt some in this case squirt some filler still a lot of chunkies in there all right here we are this polyester fill i never used it before and you can tell because it is did not do a very good job it's like i don't even have it have enough code up there. Stuff does not go very far. At least a very I've got at least I got a very wrinkly popcorn ceiling type of finish going on. I don't know what I'll do after I sand. But it's got to dry for an hour before I attempt that, so we'll see what happens then. I'm not real confident in it right now. We'll see. So uh, I guess stay tuned. See how much I screwed this up if I did. Here I am at the start of my guide coat. You can see that's the uh, result of the rough texture. Of my application is all those little black spots but you can see where I've sanded some it's not those are going away so I used I use the dry guide coat and that's what it looks like before sanding so time for me to block my brains out okay it is now Tuesday September 12th Yesterday was not a big filming video, uh, filming day, so we um, I'm gonna have two days in the same video when I get this uploaded. Uh, this was just kind of a hard day for me to film yesterday, so uh, I will show you uh, where after I sanded my uh, polyester on my fender with how it turned out here. Hope this comes up. I hung it again on the truck just to get it out of the way. There were some sanding through on spots there. I'll have to reprime with some epoxy. 
but we've got it pretty flat now. Did find, thanks to my coat, a dent there, I never had no idea. This whole area was covered in surface rust and the polyester filled that well. And there's a little bit of a, a little low there and a little low on my dent body line there. And then I didn't get that fixed, but the polyester and guy coat did its job. Show me where I'm at. So we're gonna do a little more sanding this morning and probably sand the other fender. I don't know if I'll shoot any more polyester today or not, but stay tuned everyone. Fenders ready for the next step. This one, as you can see, a lot of what I had on there, of course, polyester sanded away, but it was a lot. It was real light, probably too thin. Uh, pretty good shape, a lot of areas where, you, where it was enough filler there, of course. And here, if you watch my video where I put the epoxy on here, I was talking about all the little pop marks in the fender. Well, here's what the poly did with those, and they're pretty daggone good. Uh, so I think uh, that's some bare metal spots here. I have to re epoxy, spot epoxy primer. Look a pretty good shape, but then again, here's just this other one like off the truck where you can see a little better. A low spot there, there. Sand it through there, need a little epoxy there probably. And then need a little work on that edge, but that's where we're at now. Uh, I'm gonna do a little research, but I'm not sure if I can prime over this guide coat that's down in those all those low spots, or if I need to get all of that off. I'm trying to try to find it out while uh, eating some lunch, and we will be back later. It is now the morning of September 21st. Uh, getting back to work on the fenders here. Uh, did some spot priming this morning and to where the I sent it through to the bare metal on my polyester primer surfacer. A shot of that. Spender, uh, I've got more primer than that, but that's another coat of epoxy to cover it to bare metal again. I'm going to put in, I put on another coat of poly block sand it with my guide coat and I think that will get us where we need to be and so we'll pick back up there after I, this dries and I have a chance to apply the poly. It is now Friday September 22nd about 20 minutes till 9 a.m. after a rough day yesterday I got Another coat, the final coat, hopefully, of the polyester filler surface here on my fenders. I'm going to be block sanding them today. And what I learned yesterday, temperature was about 89 degrees. Uh, humidity is about 59%, which I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. But... Our lovely product, show you that again, just so everybody knows what I'm talking about. Right there, my Feather Fill from Evercoat. It says it has a 55 minute pot life at 70 degrees. At 89 degrees, it has definitely a lot shorter pot life. I had it set up mostly in my gun I was using. I couldn't get it all out of the cup. I did, after an hour or so of work, get the gun cleaned out and operational again. I bought another paint gun, truck supply, along with more lacquer thinner for cleanup purposes, and used the cup there. So that was a $20 mistake on my part. So in hot weather, my tip, for this feather fill is to keep close, close eye on your gun. I had sat down for waiting five minutes for a recoat and that's when all that happened. So just my tip of the day for that on that. So I'm gonna get 
my blocks out and get sanding and it'll be another fun day of sanding here and we'll see how these things turn out and I just dropped my camera sorry about that. okay here we are after sanding on the that final coat of polyester filler primer surface or whatever uh, which is a t which is the most tedious step I, I believe will be um, don't have any burn through a little bit to my a little bit to the epoxy primer that I applied earlier which you can see the difference in color and maybe texture here this is a fender I haven't started yet so I thought I would go through and do a little demonstration on how the guide coke works in case there's guys any of you out there who are not aware of how it actually works so uh, so um, be going to our next step in the sandpaper which is going to be 220 grit uh, I don't have that loaded in my block unfortunately I'll have to pause the video and come back here's the guide coat I've been using made by Merca dry dry guide coat of course black um, I've got the uh, purchase out on Amazon um, it's a little hard to do one handed so but if we turn it upside down it'll load your applicator and then you'll just apply it to yeah, yeah I'm just going to do this one small area and as you can see shows up our scanning scratches from our 180 grit so use my little block and then we'll sand and I cross hatch pattern I'll give my air hose so we can see where we're at Sorry for making you dizzy. Still got a little bit more to go. But when this is sufficiently sanded for the stage, it will show no more guide cup. Like that area right there. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down and get to work. Cause this is a little difficult to do one-handed so we'll uh see you back in the next stage okay i'm not sure this is going to show up or not but okay, i'm going to my next stage of paper here hope you can tell on this that the scratches are getting finer and finer and finer so back to sanding is like okay. so that's not too exciting i won't make myself do it at least watch it. right here's our guide coat Applied after a 320, still see the fine scratches. Four, I'm going with 400 now, which will be my last go around here. Uh, to feel it, it feels as smooth as glass. Um, I hope it's written flat. So, anyway, this will probably be the last thing with the video for today. Uh, for this episode actually got another fin whole fender to do we're not going to show that and it was kind of my plan for this episode was to end it at when these are ready for 2k primer which this will be at that point so i'll just record a little a proper closing a little later all right we are finally done with this stage of the fenders i had to make one more little putty patch after my second coat of poly polyester primer filler as you can see still it showed up some high and low spots but using my guide code and everything i believe i've got it ready to go we are going to get ready for our first layer of the 2k primer i'm going to hit these some barrier metal spots with some epoxy spot prime it come back with the 2k epoxy and we will 
I mean 2k primer and I will be locking it again after that step but here's where we are now I know this episode is taking a long time to film it's been over several several days but unfortunately there's a lot of man hours involved in bodywork so it makes for a spread out process anyway we will be back with you soon okay I once said when I started these videos that I was going to show the good the bad and the ugly well today it's going to be or this segment is because it's going to be part of a longer video is part of the ugly um, trying to spray my 2k primer it was very hot yesterday uh, around 90 degrees or more uh, my activator was for mid temps 70 to 80 I don't know if that's my problem or my gun setup or just my lack of experience but I've got a lot of dry spray on this 2k primer uh, ooh. Um, a little bit of morning sunshine coming into the crack there um, so here's what I wound up with yesterday let me get if I get the light blocked you can really see the tiger striping and the dry spray couldn't seem to get it to stop so the next job I'm going to do is try to try to get this uh, I'm going to hit it with the sandpaper stay out sands and then I'll see if I need to make another coat or not um, respray it well uh, we'll see and I'll, I'll let you know how it turns out stay tuned everybody okay I uh, locked these all down with 320 and then 400 uh, smooth that okay um, as you can, we can see in the, from that distance here but I've got some of the polyester primer showing again I'm not going to do any more of these right now they're basically considered a body work on these done uh, probably shoot a coat of epoxy uh, maybe a 2k right before I paint I'm not sure uh, but now as a little book finish for these back so I've got a nice coat of epoxy on here uh, we're going to take I'm going to take a red scuff pad here and we'll scuff that up and then uh, be right back I'll show you what we're going to do on the inside here okay I wasn't quite prepared for that but I'm going to use good old rust oleum um, high performance enamel here uh, Call it a professional grade item because uh, I just need a little extra protection inside. Don't really, don't really need to match the rest of the paint. So that's where we're going with that. Uh, I'll get to work on that and uh, we'll see you soon.
All right, here we are. That's where my paint. I was wanting to put another coat in there, but my can ran out of paint. Not worry about looks as much as just a little protection. Went with the white because that's what my final exterior color of the turtle will be. As you can see, I got some tiger stripes there where it's not covered real well. But with the epoxy underneath, I think it'll be fine. Uh, this will be the end of this long drawn out episode, at least on my end. It's been uh, several, several days of filming and working. Our next episode, we're going to move on to the doors uh, and uh, some rust repair and we'll go through uh, the body work on those. So if anybody's still out there hanging out watching, thanks for watching and click that subscribe button. And I uh, will probably film a little closer here in a little while. But anyway, uh, you guys have a great day. Okay, I kept saying I'm going to uh, video a closing statement <laughs> for these video. Uh, been a long time since I've uploaded a video and this one um, took a long time I spent a lot of time with those fenders and uh, I apologize for the if it's too sporadic seeing that I was recorded over several days as you'll see and or you've seen at this point uh, like I said like I've said in the past if you're still hanging tight with me I appreciate it uh, it was a difficult uh, series of events there on those fenders, but we'll try to do a little better on the like, episode uh, Like I've mentioned earlier in the video it is uh, Going to be working on our doors getting the rust repair done on those and uh, Body work hopefully it's a lot more a lot less body work uh, Or at least I'll do a quicker job of it. So uh, If you like my videos give me a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll see you next time <coughs> Wow, there it's fun for the blooper reel, huh? Thanks so much.